Okay, so here we have our basket of garlic scapes that we harvested last night. This basket was actually heaping full about mm, this much more over the basket. Um, but I've been working steadily since last night, chopping them into one inch pieces. Um, this is what they look like when they're chopped. I've already got a gallon size bag of them in the refrigerator. Um, once these are all done, they'll be set into the dehydrator. So, um, or actually once I process them in the food processor, then they'll be put in the dehydrator and then we will put them in the pantry to dehydrate. We don't want to do it out where we are in our living space. Um, you may want to do it in a shed or an outside porch, somewhere that's well ventilated um, because they do get quite pungent. It's pretty much like walking into a room of chopped onions. Um, so if you're very sensitive to that, be aware, make sure you do it in a well ventilated area. Um, it's very, very simple. We just use a pair of kitchen shears. We start at the top of the scape, go past the bulb and go all the way down. Um, so it's pretty, pretty simple work here. So I will show you the processing part when we get ready to do that. Um, but that's it for now. Okay, so here are the chives. My granddaughter's stirring them. <laughs> um, and these are the ones we chopped up last night. So I went ahead and used my processor blade and this is the consistency that I'm gonna stop at. I'm gonna go ahead and spread these on the tray. Now, some of this is finer and may fall through the mesh of the tray and that's absolutely fine, um, but most of it is big enough that the tray should hold it. I'm gonna go ahead and let it de dehydrate thoroughly um, in a well ventilated room because again, it's like pungent like onions. Um, so it will burn your eyes and anyone else in a five mile radius. <laughs> Probably not really that far, but you know what I mean. Um, but again, this is not a final product. So once it's thoroughly dried, then I will grind it to the consistency that I actually want it in, which will be a much finer powder. But this is just to help dehydrate it. Okay, so this is about the thickness that I'm gonna add it on the trays. And you can see I put a piece of parchment paper underneath so it wouldn't get all over the counter and everything. I mean, you can see there is some that fell through and that's absolutely fine again um, because you're gonna have layer upon layer upon layer to catch it. Okay, so this is what they look like when they are dry. There is still a touch more moisture in these though when I touch them. Um, so I am going to just let them dry for another couple hours. You want to be careful when you check because obviously because they're so small they will fall through the grating. But we're starting to get that nice crisp. But I want it to be just a little drier. So and of course, the bottom rack is always going to seem more dry because it's closer to the heat source. So you want to check several different areas. Yeah, there's still a, just a very minor amount of moisture in there. So we're gonna let it go a little longer. Okay, so here we have the finished product. Everything is thoroughly dry. We're a couple hours out from the last time I updated you. You can hear it's nice and crispy. Beautiful green color which is what we wanted. You can see there is a little bit that's kind of a more um, army green, which are where the things that dried first um, got a little deeper than what I would normally do, but that's okay because the majority is still that beautiful vibrant green and that's what we want because we know the nutrients are still in there. 
So you can see I unloaded the trays on a piece of wax paper because that makes it a whole lot easier when putting it in our nice clean jar. So what I'm gonna do is kind of make a funnel with a flexible cutting board and put it in the top of the jar and then just slowly dump these into the jar. Um, I'm gonna leave these because they are nice and cool. Um, I'm not gonna grind them any further at the moment, um, but I'm gonna leave them to store just like this. And then as I want to use them, what I'll do is I'll put them through the processor again and then I'll get them to the consistency for whatever it is that I'm making with them. So things like potato soup, potato cheddar chowder, I'll leave them a little bit more chunkier because they'll soften up when they cook. Um, but things like chives on top of baked potatoes, I'm gonna want a finer powder. So I'm gonna leave this to be minced individually according to the need that I have at the moment. Um, may even make a little bit of garlic um, salt with some of this added to it. So it'll be really nice. And that is how you dry and process garlic chives or garlic scapes.